Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna break down the process of selecting a power system for a more significant top speed run goal. Now, even though that we're talking about speed run goals here in this particular video, this process works for every single radio control vehicle. No matter which one you're going to be focusing on, the best thing to do is to select that speed that you wish the radio control car to hit at the top speed, its maximum speed within your run, and then work back from there. Once you know and have an idea of that, that is quite realistic, that's important. We need realistic goals here because we want to put a realistic power system into our radio control vehicle. Then we can start to pick components such as your brushless motor, your electronic speed control, the batteries that need to go into your system in order to you know, complement the motor and speed control that you have, and then to tie all of that to Together, you need a good gearing system to make sure that the speed of the motor can be reduced to the speed that the wheels are going to need to turn at. We're gonna go through this entire thing here and break down the details required for each step along the way. And we're ultimately gonna be spending the most amount of time on gearing as this is the thing that makes the connection between your brushless motor, the top speed goal that you're looking for, reliability, and making sure that we don't blow anything up in the process. This is gonna be the final stage that we really sum everything up together. Right now is probably a great time to introduce what I was thinking about for this channel. I want to introduce something that is going to be a little more entertaining and not so much educational, but kind of be able to tie it into the educational side of things. And what I was thinking of is featuring all of your guys' builds on the channel and seeing your top speed run cars or radio control vehicles perform to their maximums. The way this would work is that you could send in a link to a video on YouTube of your top speed run pass. It would be nice if you had the speed that you were able to achieve. If not, the absolute minimum that you'd have to send me is the information about your power system, what brushless motor you're using, speed control, batteries, as well as your gearing for that particular model of radio control vehicle. Once we know what kind of model you're using and all that information, what I would do is compile a video that is able to talk about that power system being used while I'm able to show you your video being featured in a video that I post. Perhaps maybe we can do this as like Fast Friday or something. I'm not sure, I'm just throwing out the idea. If I get enough of these videos being sent on a regular basis, what I can do is then compile them and release videos every other Friday or maybe once every Friday within a month, something like that. I think this would be good because there's a lot of really good videos and when I was searching around, I saw videos that just weren't getting the attention that I think those specific videos deserve and I hope that I can help out and talk about those power systems and make it very relevant to the audience here on this channel. If you have a video you'd like to share and you got some information about the radio control vehicle you used, I'm going to put some information up on the screen so that you'll be able to send that my way and then hopefully we get enough of this to do something with it and I'm expecting over time we can build it out. We'll see how this goes otherwise let's jump right back into our build and talk about the vehicle. The vehicle that we're going to use here here in this particular video is going to be the Limitless V2. Limitless V2 did get a gearing revision from the Limitless V1, so do note there is a difference there, and we're gonna be using specs from the V2. Another thing to note here is that our speed goal is 140 miles per hour. That is quite significant. Uh, from a point of view of speed and in order to hit this we're going to need a motor that can handle that power and the first question is how do we know that we're going to get a motor that has that kind of power so we really need to break that down no matter what kind of radio control vehicle that you get whether it's a plane or a boat or a radio control car like what we're talking about in this video the first thing that you need to do is understand what kind of power level you're going to need to achieve your goal so when we go and hop onto the internet, we look at YouTube videos, we look at forums, one of the biggest things that we're seeing is that there are already a lot of guys that are running the type of vehicle that we plan to use being a Limitless V2. And what we can establish is that there's a lot of information for the Limitless in terms of builds that guys have done and what kind of motors and stuff that they've used. Now we know that there's some significant TP brushless motors that they're using and we know that there's also 
Castle Creations motors that they're using as well. The other way to approach this problem for a radio control car really comes down to experience, knowing how much power that you're going to require and knowing what power system is going to be able to, you know, get you there, get you to that goal. And as for this approach, there's not too much I want to actually say here for it. It really comes down to experience and we'll just leave it at that. Now let's dive back into understanding what kind of power system we're going to need to use. When we go and look up what people are using to hit something like 140 miles per hour, there's two common solutions to this. And it typically is 6S or 8S. And we know that 6S is going to have less power opportunities, less power potential than an 8S power system. And for this reason, it's going to be a lot more simple for us just to jump to that maximum power potential being an 8S battery solution. When we take this 8S solution and we go back and research on YouTube and forums what kind of brushless motors guys are using, it really comes back to 17 series or larger Castle Creations brushless motors being used or 40, 70, 40, 60 even brushless motors coming from TP Power. Now when it comes to the TP motor versus Castle Creations, both motors are going to perform very well. In my case, I do prefer sensor motors just because it makes it a little bit more simple off the line. It's a little more cleaner. Is it required? Absolutely not. Sensorless motors work very well too. If you want more information on the sensor versus sensorless motors, I'll drop a link in the description below. Now when it comes to Castle Creations, I do prefer this. I've used TP Power as well as Castle Creations motors in brushless speed run vehicles vehicles. However, I do have a preference for Castle Creation stuff and I do want to share my bias because I want to be very transparent with this selection but I also want you to know that you don't need to follow the same steps that I am taking here. Another point to make is I'm absolutely in no way sponsored by Castle. Every Castle Creations product on this channel that you've ever seen has been paid in full by me. So I do want to make that a point because oftentimes when I'm making these types of videos I always get pointed that I'm trying to advertise. No, I'm just trying to be very transparent transparent in my selection and tell you this is why I've decided to go this way but you don't need to go this way you can choose another path and that path that I'm also recommending such as our TP power motors they perform very well too. Now when it comes to the electronic speed control, what we're ultimately looking for here is a speed control that can handle the significant goal that we've set and that's 140 miles per hour. We also need a speed control that can handle 8S. Now I just mentioned that I do use a lot of Castle Creations. When we're talking about the big Castle brushless motors, the best ESC to match that up with is going to be the biggest and baddest ESC that Castle Creations offers and that is the XLX2. I have a couple of these that I use in my top speed run vehicles and they perform flawlessly and I know that they can be pushed well over 500 amps and this is critical because we will be upwards of 500 amps for a 140 mile per hour speed run on that acceleration to get up to top speed. Now again you don't need to choose a Castle Creations ESC here. What you can do is you can just select an ESC that is capable of 8S as well as that same 500 amp peaks that we're going to be hitting on this type of build. Now that we have those two components selected, we already know roughly what we want for the battery pack. We're going to choose an 8S lithium polymer battery pack. We need to know what kind of capacity that we're ultimately after. And let's assume that we're going to use 5,000 packs for this video. So now we really have that defined 5,000 milliamp hour 8S battery is going to be required for this specific 140 mile per hour build. Now the next part that we're gonna do, I'm gonna shoot over to the computer because we need to pick a brand and ultimately what we're after is the best performing battery packs that can get us the lowest amount of voltage drop. And we have collected data for the last over a year at this point and we know what batteries are performing like based off of the tests that we've run on this channel. And if you haven't seen any of those videos, I would highly recommend checking out your favorite battery pack. We may have it already actually on the channel tested and you can see videos of that where we go through some intense amounts of detail on those specific batteries. All right, let's switch things up and check out what kind of battery and gearing we're going to use. All right, here we are on the Castle Creations website. We know the series of motor that we want to use, but right now what we need to do is define the KV value that we're going to use for the motor. So let's do that right now. We're going to go under products, under surface, and we're going to scroll past the electronic speed controls. We know that the speed control we want to use is going to be this Mamba XLX2. 
and we're gonna use that one. And we're gonna scroll past all of these and go to the 17 series brushless motors. Now we said 17 series or something larger is something that we can use within this particular setup. We're gonna take a look at the extreme series. And the reason why I picked this one is because it's gonna make a little bit more of a challenge for us when it comes to gearing on this specific setup. So we have a 2400 kV motor and Castle even says it's good for 8S. So we are good here. This is the motor we're gonna use, 2400 kV. Now let's switch over to the Patreon RC Calc Sheet. The Patreon Calc Sheet is something that if you want, you can download a copy for yourself. Just become a Patreon member of the tier one platform and that will grant you access to this as a downloadable copy. And you'll have the entire spreadsheet along with all the tabs of information here below. Otherwise, if you don't want to become a member of the Patreon site, that's okay too. You can go onto the radiocontrolinfo.com website and you're going to see a calculator that's somewhat similar to what we're using here today. And that's going to be the KV speed calculator here on the left hand side that we're going to be using. There's going to be some of the functionality that you won't have there on the online sheet, but the Patreon site will have all of what you see here today. We come out with a version every single month. Here we're in the April's version that I'm just preparing and setting up for a release during that first week of April. So a couple things that we want to do here is enter in information for the cells. We know we're going to use 8S. We just saw the KV2400. Another thing we want to pay attention to is tire diameter. We're going to want to make sure that we measure the diameter of our tires or take a spec off the manual if we are indeed using factory spec tires. Here 101 is exactly what this should be set to for our case here today. Now you can see the differential on spur gear and all these you know, numbers here don't make sense. We don't need to look these up. We can go and use the chart on the right hand side. All we need to do is pick the limitless V2 and this automatically updates. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, the 39 pinion versus spur is factory uh, gearing. And I think they don't actually come with a pinion, but this is the smallest pinion gear that we can physically fit on to the vehicle. So we need to know that because that's important for everything that we do here moving forward. Now let's scroll and pan over to the right hand side and talk about these these uh, loading currents and the average IR per cell as well as the loading factors as a percentage. Let's start off with the loading factor. This is really coming down to the motor's performance. If we know that this brushless motor can perform all the way from let's say guys are running it at 50 miles an hour versus 180 miles an hour on this particular brushless motor, our 2400 KV 1721 series from Castle, then we know we're gonna be somewhere between this range, 180 miles an hour being close to the top end, 15% and you know around the 50, 40 mile an hour mark, somewhere around the 2% mark. So today we're going for 140 miles an hour. So we're probably somewhere around 10, 11%. We can use 11%. Uh, to go through this particular example. Now let's jump into the calculated loaded voltage per cell. The load of current as speed, we need to put in the value that we expect this vehicle to pull from our system when it's at that top speed of 140 miles per hour. Then we also need to put in the average IR per cell that we're gonna use for the battery that we plan to spec for this vehicle. So low to current, I would expect under acceleration, we're probably gonna see 500 to 600 amps depending on how aggressive we are in our acceleration. But top speed is probably gonna be somewhere under that. I would expect somewhere between 350 and 375. Now if you don't know, you can simply provide a guess. Better values obviously are gonna help your calculation calculation. Another thing you could do is hop on to a forum, find a chart that someone has of the graph of their power being pulled. And you could see when they hit the top speed, it's going to be where the brushless motor hits its maximum RPM, provided it didn't leave the ground, that you're going to get the amount of current somewhere in that area at the top speed. And it probably is going to be a little lower than the rest of the acceleration. So we're going to go for argument's sake here. I don't, I haven't looked at a graph in a very long time. I'm going to put in 375 amps and we're going to move on to the average IR per cell. And here's where you can ultimately look at the battery performance that you are expecting based off of what you want to purchase. Now we've tested a bunch of batteries here on the channel. You can review any one of those battery videos to get the IRs that we had in those specific examples. Now I'm going to give you a few right off the top of my head. These are ones that I do know. I just looked them up. The SMC performs with a average IR of less than one milliohm. If you're looking for absolute top performance, that's something that you'll want to go with. And then you can use one milliohm 
here in the calculation. Now, if you're looking at something a little bit more tame, such as like the CNHL battery pack, the G plus line of the CNHL battery packs, you can go and use a value of 1.4. And then also the Turnigy Graphene Panther, they're somewhere around 1.8 to 2. I think it was 1.8 came out in the, in the actual test that we do. So we can use that value here. And if we want to be a little bit more conservative, we can go with a 2 milliohm. Uh, as well for our average IR. Let's go ahead and place it as two. So we got 375 and two milliohms in our calculation. You can see the loaded voltage there per cell goes to 3.45 volts. Keeping in mind, this is based off of the LiPo max voltage per cell that we set right here is 4.2. If you know you're not gonna make your speed pass at 100% battery capacity, maybe you're gonna do a pass or two before you go for that nice hot pass, what you'll wanna do is adjust this if you have additional information. So let's say, for example, 4.1, that's gonna change your load of voltage per cell. And for example, if you did 4.05, that's gonna also change it respectively. So we're going to keep it at 4.2. We're going to keep it relatively simple here and go from there. Now we're going to go and use that 11% in our loaded factor and we're going to move on to the next part because what we see here on the bottom is a little alarming. Speed of 329 kilometers an hour, 204 miles per hour definitely is not going to be all that possible with this brushless motor the way that we're trying to achieve it. We're trying to maintain a reliable, healthy setup here. We're not going for record breaking speeds on this brushless motor. I'm not even sure if we can hit 204 miles per hour on this motor. It certainly is possible, but I've never seen anything for myself close to that. So let's go ahead and adjust the pinion and spur gear. If we do know this is the smallest pinion that we can fit on the vehicle, one thing that we have to watch out for is the spur gear. We need to know what the maximum size is. Now I do believe if my memory serves me correctly, I'm able to speed through this because I have some of these values already recalling from memory the spur gear of 39. I think we can go up to 45. And you can see as we go through this as we go on 40 we get down to 199 41 gets us to 194 let's jump up all the way to 45 this gets us to 177 so still a fair ways away from where so still a fair ways away from where we want to be here. Uh, but one of the things that we can do is start to adjust that pinion gear. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the, the stock numbers here, because what I like to do often is take the sum of this. You can see the sum in the bottom right hand corner here, 71. This is important because the sum of these two need to stay the same. This sum is the smallest sum of values that we can use in this particular vehicle. We need to make sure that we are no less than 71 when we're going through gearing here. Since we we went up by six, we can go down by a maximum of six. And as you can see, of course, as we go down pinion from 32 to 31, we're going down in speed, 177 to 172 to 166 and so forth. Let's jump all the way down to six off of that mark of 32, which is gonna be 26. If we use a 26 tooth pinion and a 45 tooth spur gear, this is gonna give us a total of 144 miles per hour. So this is good stuff. We're starting to see that the speed is going Going to hit our goal and this is the first time that we've seen a speed somewhere anywhere near where we should be. What you'll want to do after your setup is get the vehicle out there on the street and you'll want to make your first pass, you know, maybe 40, 60 miles an hour, somewhere around there, just to make sure that everything's tracking straight and true. And then work your way up to that goal of 140 miles per hour. You want to gain the confidence of the vehicle to know that it's performing very well before you get up to a significant speed. And once you're confident and you know there's no odd behavior happening with the vehicle, then go ahead and make your fast passes. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. Hope you're able to submit a video link and information about your setup into the channel here. Can't wait to see all of what you guys got. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you guys in another one. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.